So it's been a few days since the launch of GPT-5, which arrived to much fanfare last Thursday. And I think at this point, it's fair to say that the launch hasn't quite gone to plan. But is the tepid response to GPT-5 a sign that we're now entering an AI trough of disillusionment, where the initial hype dies down before gradually regaining momentum, albeit at a slightly slower pace? In this video, we'll take a look at some of the reactions and perspectives from around the web so far in the days since the launch of GPT-5, and what this could potentially mean for OpenAI and the wider tech industry. And as always, if you enjoy the channel, hit the subscribe and the like button. So with ChatGPT firmly cemented as the number one consumer AI product, there was always going to be a huge amount of pressure on them to deliver. Now, I've had a chance to play around with GPT-5, and to me, this does feel like a solid incremental upgrade more than anything else. But the reason I think this feels more incremental is in part because of the progress made by competitors. Many of us have already used models from the likes of Claude, which are just as good, and the gaps between each generation of model now feel more iterative than revolutionary. In many ways, I'm actually surprised that they decided to give this model the name GPT-5, given just how much brand equity there is in anything GPT-related. I would have thought this name would have been reserved for something far more spectacular than a model that brings it pretty much on par with competitors. So here's a quick summary of how GPT-5 scores. And compared to its previous models, GPT-5 is certainly an improvement upon previous GPT models. A lot of emphasis has been placed on its coding capabilities, and the benchmarks seem to reflect this. GPT-5 scores 74.9% on the software benchmark verified test versus Claude Opus 4.1's 74.5. And for some bizarre reason, they use this strange graph to contextualize GPT-5's performance on this test. Now, this graph makes no sense to me at all, but maybe this was just a, a mistake we'll give them the benefit of the doubt for now. Benchmarks are one thing, but anecdotal feedback is painting a slightly more mixed picture. So let's take a look at what real world people are saying, and we'll start with the engineering community. Now the feedback from the engineering community is pretty mixed, and engineers aren't exactly known to mince their words. Mark Liu asks the question of whether GPT-5 is just not that good. He says that it's too slow and that for now he's switched back to Claude Sonnet. This graph shows how GPT-5 compares against Claude Opus on agentic tasks, and you can see that it doesn't perform anywhere near as well as Claude's Opus. And speed is another issue in this developer's experience. He says that GPT-5 is consistently slower than Claude on simple tasks, which is extremely annoying. Over on Reddit, some of the feedback has been equally brutal, with this image pretty much summing up the general feeling. Now, of course, there is a difference between initial impressions and longer-term experiences with models. And some teams have had access to the models in advance, which gave people more time to draw their own conclusions. So now let's take a look at some of those reactions from people who've had longer than just a couple of days to use these models and to understand how they might work in the real world. First up is the folks over at Every. Now they came up with their own tests for assessing the, cap the model's capabilities. And these tests included writing evaluation, game creation, AI diplomacy where the model played as France in a simulated diplomacy game, and a variety of coding tasks with pair programming in Cursor. Here's a representation of how each of the every team members rated their experience. The yellow represents the conclusion that it's okay, but it's not something you would use every day. Green stands for psyched about this model, and number one stands for paradigm shift. So you can see clearly that out of the seven people who reviewed this, only four of them said that they were psyched, with the rest having mixed to negative reviews. The teams found that it was good at everyday tasks, and it excelled in pair programming and writing. But it fell flat in agentic engineering, with the team saying that GPT-5 in Codex and Cursor is too cautious to be good as an agentic programmer versus Claude. And for editing, GPT-5 can't determine whether writing is good. One of the tests that they ran involved creating a one-shot music app across both ChatGPT-5 and Claude. So here's what each of the models produced. And you can see that the ChatGPT version of this music app looks pretty good. But when you look at the Claude version of this, you can see that based on exactly the same prompt, Claude does a better version of making this more visually appealing. The spaces, the fonts, the overall UX just feels better than what ChatGPT was able to come up with. Elsewhere, in another series of tests over on Latent Space, they conducted what they call vibe tests, which covered a variety of different use cases, including asking GPT-5 some short personal questions to understand its behavior and strengths compared to other models. They also gave it specific coding tasks. One of the more complicated tests that they gave to GPT-5 was to solve a gnarly dependency conflict that they say Cursor, Claude Code, and Opus 4 couldn't figure out. They say that GPT-5 actually one-shotted it, and as part of this, they say that it was beautiful to watch and instantly made the model click. This is high praise indeed. And they go on to say that GPT-5 is excellent 
at Vibe Coding Apps as well. So in this example, GPT-5 was asked to build a personal website with a Mac OS 9 theme using only HTML, CSS and JavaScript with no frameworks or libraries. It did so and it created a painting app with features like a pen, pencil and eraser and made the icons movable and persisted their locations to local storage as well as saving the files all without the user needing to inspect the code. The reviewers praised this saying that when vibe coding, GPT-5 loves to surprise with little details that actually work. So for example, when they asked it for a painting app, it added different types of pens, pencils, erasers, color pickers and so on. Each of these little features actually worked. So in this case, GPT-5 actually does a better job than in the first example where it fell flat against Claude Code. In summary, they say that GPT-5 is unequivocally the best coding model in the world. We were probably around 65% of the way through automating software engineering, and now we might be around 72%. To me, it's the biggest leap since 3.5 Sonnet. Now that is praise indeed. One of the most high profile critics of GPT-5 is the former Uber exec and AI critic Gary Marks. His review of GPT-5 is pretty brutal and in typical Gary fashion, he describes the launch as shambolic and says that despite high expectations and hype from Sam Altman, the model has failed to deliver anything close to a breakthrough. He argues that GPT-5 still struggles with fundamental problems like errors and hallucinations and the inability to reason and generalize. He cites a new study from Arizona State University which showed that even the latest models, including GPT-5, fail to generalize well outside their training data and that this distribution shift problem means that models can't reliably apply what's learned in new and unfamiliar situations. Examples include failing at chess reasoning, visual comprehension and even basic reading and summarization tasks. He says that the pure scaling approach, which is where models are made bigger by training them on more and more data, has hit a wall, and that the core architecture is not enough to achieve AGI. He suggests that a new approach is needed and cites neurosymbolic AI with explicit real-world models as examples for real-world breakthroughs. So how might all of this impact OpenAI? So in a rational world, Gary argues that their valuation should take a hit, given that they no longer have anything like a clear technical lead. Many of their best people have left, OpenAI still isn't making a profit, and people are becoming more skeptical about OpenAI and its CEO. Just to put the challenge from competitors into context, here's a snapshot of what Google released in just the past two weeks. This includes Genie 3, which is the world's most advanced simulator, Alpha Earth, which is a geospatial model of the entire planet, Notebook LM video overviews, and a bunch more. So we are left with a distinct taste in our mouth that OpenAI really isn't the one pushing at the frontiers anymore. But of course, the world isn't always rational. And if we come at this from a product perspective, we can explore what this might mean for OpenAI's consumer and business products. So for businesses, OpenAI still heavily dominates the B2B space through its APIs. And you can see from the latest reports from Ramp, OpenAI remains the model of choice for most American businesses. This may indeed continue, but this report cuts off in June. You can start to see a slight decline in its share, but we'll have to wait for the next report to see how this looks. And for consumers, the average user of ChatGPT probably doesn't even know GPT-5 exists or what that even means. ChatGPT is firmly number one in the app charts and much to Elon Musk's dismay, it is heavily promoted in the App Store. So just yesterday, Elon Musk announced that XAI plans to sue the Apple App Store, arguing that Apple and OpenAI's partnership has led to excessive unfair promotion of ChatGPT over others. ChatGPT celebrated reaching a massive 700 million weekly active users last week, which is up 4x year on year. And despite the disastrous launch of GPT-5, ChatGPT has achieved what only a tiny amount of tech companies ever managed to achieve. It has become a verb that has entered the daily vocabulary of millions of people worldwide. Strategically, maybe that alone will be enough to help it shake off this episode and continue to reign supreme. With new products in the pipeline, it is too soon to write off OpenAI, but there have definitely been some lessons learned in how not to manage the rollout of a new model this week. What do you think? Have you tried out GPT-5? I've put some links to the reviews that I've mentioned in the description below, and let me know in the comments below what you think. Thanks very much for listening and watching, and I'll see you in the next one.